Another example that we have of extracellular proteolytic cleavage cascades leading to a rapid uh, response and, and signaling would be the clotting cascade. And I'm not really going to stress this stuff up here. Um, I actually made a concept maps for medical physiology if you'd like to know the details of this, but this is really more so uh, focused from a biochemist perspective. So they all, either the you know intrinsic pathway or the extrinsic pathway through enzymatic cascade, or in this case, the, the glycoprotein tissue factor, they all converge on this final common pathway. And so this is not just useful in that this is something that they both converge on, but a lot of drugs work just by modifying the final common pathway. And since the first uh, proenzyme that we work with is prothrombin, I'm gonna take some time just to little, illustrate a little bit about it. It has, in the prothrombin form, a GLA domain, and the GLA domain is important for calcium binding, which I'll illustrate that later. And then two crinkle domains, which are just structural domains that apparently look similar to a Danish, a Danish treat? I don't really know. It's like a donut, but not really. I'm an American. I don't really know. <laughs> I don't know much about that stuff. But yeah, so this is the first step in the pre-enzyme. And I, I want to also kind of illustrate a concept that not a lot of people understand. The pro-enzymes, they're not just created like that for the sake of regulation. They have functional domains in the pro-enzyme. For example, with prothrombin. So this leads this importance of that GLA domain is for calcium binding. The reason why calcium is really, really important, if you've ever worked with calcium, you knows that it will form a precipitate with anything that is anionic very, very quickly. And in this context, we're exploiting that property of calcium. So by using calcium, we can localize the prothrombin to the site of injury, usually on the anionic surfaces of the platelet. One of the things that we can do is uh, to facilitate this binding and, and to make sure that calcium does not go around and do whatever, is to add a, a gamma carboxyl group to it. This is done through things of vitamin K, and this creates a molecule called a chelator. And a chelator is something that prevents an ion from just floating around and binding and doing other things. If you've ever worked in healthcare, you know about the uh, anticoagulant EDTA, EDTA is a calcium chelator, and it works by a similar mechanism, preventing the calcium from, in this case, interacting with the prothrombin, which prevents the clotting of your blood. Okay, so yes, vitamin K is essential for this. Uh, we actually call it vitamin K clotting in, in Swedish. I think in Swedish, yeah. Clotting is spelled with a K, so vitamin K is needed for clotting. I always thought that was really interesting. Um, Understanding of that biosynthetic pathway has led to a lot of other developments of drugs. For example, warfarin or coumadin. This is also derived from rat poison as well. It's creepy how many drugs in uh, cardiology are originally once just really good poisons. We activate thrombin. Thrombin is going to act on converting fibrinogen into fibrin. So over here we see a picture on the structure of fibrinogen. Notice that it has three chains to it, an alpha, a beta, and a gamma. And on the beta and gamma globular units, there are some binding sites. Those binding sites are used once we have the proteolysis by thrombin to reveal s sequences where we can have some cross-linking taking place. And it's not illustrated in the book, but it's not just between the alpha chain and the gamma chain, but the beta head globular head unit can bind with the beta cleavage site as well. These tend to be rich in glycine and arginine, which would tell me to think that there may be some anionic amino acids taking place in these head groups, but the textbook didn't really mention it. Doesn't really matter. Once we form this interlocking, we have something called a soft clot. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna have transglutaminase come in, and this is going to catalyze the formation of a covalent bond that makes a very thick and dense fibrin mesh. Blood clotting must be regulated, obviously, precisely. You don't wanna have blood clots just randomly and spontaneously form within your blood. So they have to form rapidly one, in order for these activation cascades to succeed. And it has to remain localized to the area that you're working with, for obvious reasons. Activation factors are really short-lived. Um, the blood has a lot of, of kinetic energy within it, and so it's very easy to knock things out of place and induce confirmation. But they're also diluted by blood flow as well. Nearly all biochemical reactions are concentration dependent. They're also gonna be degraded, in this case, by proteases. That's pretty much the only thing that you can do uh, at least in this context, to, to dissociate that reaction. Thrombin is actually the, the master regulator of this cascade because thrombin not only plays a role in activating other factors in this uh, cascade, but also activates protein C, which ends up shutting off this pathway as well. And protein C has a lot of other biological functions as well. So antithrombin-3 is a specific serpent as well that plays a role in, in inhibiting these pathways. I think a lot of drugs work along a similar mechanism as that of antithrombin-3. 
And then this picture down here that I wanted to show was, is uh, talking about tissue plasminogen activator. And so what TPA does is after you form this clot and after everything's healed up, you want to break that down so that you can get a restoration happening here. But it's used clinically a lot um, in cases of MIs where patients, uh, let's say I think this is a patient that had initially had an MI and then I think about one or two hours afterwards they had administered TPA either through like a cath lab or through a central line and you can actually see the improvement in the blood flow in the before and after.